Hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and back here with another video for the original Xbox. This one is going to be for soft modded consoles because I will say this, this here will be in regards to changing the hard drive key on a system, the do's and don'ts, pros and cons, some precautions to take, some things to look out for, because this is certainly not going to be for everyone. But I will say here right off the bat that if you have a hard modded system, meaning that you have a system with a custom BIOS, so something such as a console run a mod chip or maybe a custom TSOP flash modified system, there's really no need to do this at all. Since with those systems, you can drop in any type of storage and you don't need to have a matching hard drive key. You could even have a unlocked drive if you want to put in there. So that's all to say, if you're running a custom BIOS on your system, you really should not need this at all. However, if you have a soft modded original Xbox here and you've thought of nulling out or unoing or really standardizing your hard drive key, there are some pros and cons to this, so I would like to get into that, which means this will be a bit of a longer, more informative video, but I will show you what to do once all the precautions are taken on here. So for anybody who does not know, the original Xbox has an internal hard drive on the system. Now one specific thing with this Xbox, if you have a stock system or even a soft modded one, is that it will run a retail BIOS, meaning that the hard drive paired to this system here is going to be locked to this specific system and it really only unlocks once it is booted up properly on the accompanying motherboard tied to the hard drive here, and you're able to make that connection. That's why if you ever upgrade or replace the hard drive on a soft modded Xbox here, for example, not only it must be lockable, but it must be locked with that specific key so it can work on the motherboard that it is being paired to. Now for several years, a little bit of a shortcut in case you did not have the EEPROM on hand or even some future proofing you could say was setting that unique key to all zeros. Essentially, you would edit it on the console itself where you would null out the key, set it to all zeros, and then make sure that was matching on the hard drive itself. And therefore, if you ever had to hook up your drive to your computer, or if you ever had to build a new hard drive for this system, you didn't have to remember or keep the 32 character key on hand, you just knew that it was 32 zeros and that's all there was to it. Standardizing your Xbox key also does have a nice benefit where let's say you have multiple Xbox consoles and they are soft modded. If, for example, you standardize the key on every single original Xbox you own, at that point you can actually just freely swap hard drives between your soft modded systems. As long as the key is matching on the hard drive and the motherboard for each system, it'll work just fine. And that did work for quite a while. However, side effects and issues with it did not really come about until the advent of Insignia, which is the rebooted Xbox Live 1.0 free replacement service. It is not official Xbox Xbox Live, but it is a free replacement and it is a community driven effort and I would recommend checking it out. However, as it is supposed to act like the original Xbox Live, one of the side effects is that you cannot go online with a nulled out key or a key set to all zeros. Do keep in mind, for well over 10 years, this was not an issue because the original Xbox Live was dead, but since Insignia was going to be rebooting it, this did present an issue, which is when it was found in the community that if you set it to anything except for all zeros, it will work just fine on Insignia. So that is when the new standardization of Unoing a key ended up coming out, as opposed to setting it to all zeros, you set it to all ones. Thankfully, this is easy to remember, it can be standardized, and it works online. So not only you get the benefit of being able to access this drive on a computer with something such as Fat Explorer, or being able to build a new drive for your console and already having the key on hand, because it is easy enough to remember, but on top of that, this is now Insignia compatible. So it sounds all good, right? Well, there's also a few precautions that you need to take note of. Now, I think I've been able to cover the pros pretty well, but there are a few cons to make note of. And I did want to say a big thank you to a few resources here, one of them being the end game page over on console mods, in which I was referencing here the standardizing your hard drive key option here for the end game soft mod or end game entry point for a soft mod here. 
Again, this is optional, but if you are coming to check out this video on it, then you're probably a bit interested in this. I did also want to thank a few friends I had reached out to and kind of asked some questions in regards to this here before making this video, one of them being Harcroft through the Xbox community, and another person here being Billy when I'd asked some Insignia specific questions in regards to this. First of all, when it comes to accessing Insignia, the original Xbox Live replacement service, do keep in mind if you decide to standardize or Uno your key, if you do it before you register your console on Insignia, you should be good to go. However, if you've already registered your console on Insignia, and then you decide to change your hard drive key, you will not be able to connect back online with that console until the Insignia team goes in manually, removes your console from their registration, and then you go through the process of re-registering your console. The second piece of information here is in regards to content. So any type of downloadable content or updates, once you change your hard drive key, they will no longer be usable until you get them re-signed with that new hard drive key. Thankfully, there is a tool to do this pretty easily called the Content Recovery Tool, and we'll do a quick walkthrough of it near the end of this video. A final worry here for a few specific games are that there are several games with non-roamable or EEPROM locked saves, meaning here that these saves cannot be transferred to another console without using third-party tools, and that also includes changing the hard drive key on your specific console, because it is essentially treated as a new system. So there is a great reference for this over on the console mods wiki, and there's a specific list of games that are on here, including Black, Burnout 2 and 3, a few of the Dead or Alive games, and a few of the bigger ones here being Forza Motorsport 2, Fantasy Star Online, Project Gotham Racing 2. You're just going to want to check this list, and if you play any of these games on here, just do keep in mind that these specific games will have their saves broken, and they do require additional steps in order to reassign them to your new key. Finally, it is worth noting here, and I would like to quote my friend Harcroft on this from when we talked about it, he had said, changing the hard drive key is not a substitute for backing up your data. So that's all to say, if you see benefits for your sake on this, you're more than welcome to do this. However, at the end of the day, you should still be backing up your console specific EEPROM keep it somewhere safe and make sure you can find it in case you need to access it if you're accessing this hard drive on a computer, building a new hard drive, what have you. Thankfully, an EEPROM backup is only a few kilobytes at best, so it is incredibly easy to back it up to cloud storage or put it somewhere safe. Plus, when you back up your console EEPROM, it's not just the hard drive key, there's several other console-specific variables that are in that EEPROM file, so it's always a good idea to keep that somewhere safe for your system. With the legacy of nulling out keys, uno wing keys, standardizing them, warnings, pros, cons, all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the process here if you're wanting to do this. The first thing here will be you will of course need a soft modded Xbox. Again, if you have a retail system, a stock one, you will have to soft mod it, and if you have a hard modded one, you should not be following along with this. However, if you have a soft modded system, you will need to do this with the Rocky 5 soft mod. Now if you want to check and see what version you might have on here, if you're using Rocky 5, for example I'm on Unleash X, you can come over to the system, go over to skins, and if you find something that is in regards to soft mod, like a Evox wide or just a standard skin right here, go ahead and load it up. And as you can see, this system is already running the Xbox soft modding tool because it does say Xbox soft mod info running 1.2.1 creator Rocky 5. However, if you do not have these soft mod skins here, then it is likely to say you do not have the Rocky 5 soft mod. Do keep in mind that changing the hard drive key was changed up a little bit from zeroing to wanting it out, so it would be recommended to run the latest version of the Rocky 5 soft mod. So you will need to either upgrade to the Rocky 5 soft mod or update to the latest version, something after 1.1.8. So I'm going to switch back to my default skin and I'm going to show you all how to do that. In order to do this here, you will need your soft modded system up and running and you will need to connect it to your local area network. As you can see in the bottom right hand corner of my screen, I do have an IP address showing up, so you will need to FTP over a few files. I'll have the link down below in the description for the Xbox soft modding tool, but what you'll need to do is come over to the GitHub page and go over to the installation section and download the pre-built versions. You can go ahead and click on download right here, and once you're here, you're going to need to go to the installer variants folder, and now you need to pick one of these two. 
if you already have the Xbox soft modding tool installed and you just want to update it, you need to download Quick Update. And if you have any other soft mod which is not Rocky 5, you'll need to download Quick Upgrade. Do keep in mind this is being recommended because several other soft mods out there which are not Rocky 5 use a virtual EEPROM. So if you end up changing your EEPROM here and it's a virtual one, you could brick your system. But once you find the zip that works for you, you'll just want to highlight it and then go ahead and download and save it somewhere you can easily find it. You'll also need a FTP client. This does not have to be WinSCP, but go ahead and pick your favorite one or your preferred one. But the one I personally use is WinSCP. So you can download and install this here if you're using Windows. And if you're having any issues with archive extraction, you can always use 7-Zip. It's free and easy to use. Just download and install this. Once you have WinSCP or whatever you're your favorite FTP program is installed and running, you can get your quick update or quick upgrade zip. And what we're going to do is right click and extract this into its own folder. It should be a pretty small folder here in which you can open this up and there's going to be the folder itself and a readme.txt. Go ahead and give the readme a quick read here. And thankfully the instructions here are going to be the exact same for quick update or quick upgrade. Again, you want to use quick update if you already have Rocky 5, but if you have any other soft mod, you want to use quick upgrade. So all you need to do is make sure you have this folder right here. And inside of this, you'll have the default Unleash X and everything else. Once you have this extracted, fire up your FTP program. Connect to your Xbox by going to open a new remote tab. We're going to do FTP for this, no encryption. Enter in your IP address for your console. And then the username and password will be Xbox, one word, all lowercase. Port number, of course, will be 21, and you can click on Login. And once you are connected, all you need to do is connect to the E drive. And inside of the E drive, you're going to want to grab your quick update or quick upgrade folder and drag and drop it. So it should look like this. If you've also run a soft mod before, you should have a backup or a backups folder. And inside of here, you should have an EEPROM backup. So if you want to take a backup of this right now, just you have a before state of your console, or if you just need to take a backup and you decide to not do this, go ahead and download this EEPROM somewhere you can easily find it. And there you go, make sure you keep that somewhere safe. So now that we're done connecting for the time being, we can go ahead, come back out here and close out of WinSCP. Over on your console, you'll need to go to the File Explorer. So I'm going to go to System, File Explorer, go to your E drive, go to quick update or quick upgrade, and then you're going to launch the default.xbe. Thankfully here, the instructions, just like the Rocky 5 soft mod are pretty simple, where if you want to start to update or upgrade, you just tap the A button and then let it unpack and do its thing. And as you can see, it is going to take a EEPROM backup, so you can hit OK, I understand, and I understand, and now it is going to reboot your console. When it reboots, it should back up your EEPROM, and then it's going to reboot one more time. Once your console reboots, it should bring you to a screen like this, which this is Unleash X, and if you want to change your skin, you can go to System, Skins, I personally choose the default skin right here. Then if you need to tweak anything else, I'm going to go back to System, Go over to settings here, and here you can change your video display. So I need to enable 720p, change this to widescreen, which I will need to reboot the system. And you can also change your screen calibration if needed. But I'm going to give this a quick reboot just so I can get 720p running. So now that we're back up and running where we need to be here, you should be on the latest version of the Rocky 5 soft mod. And at this point, if you want to still change your hard drive key, you can go ahead and continue on. Again, like I said, do keep in mind any DLC and any tile updates that are installed must be re-signed. Some saves for certain games will break until they are re-signed if you choose to re-sign them. And finally, if you have registered your console on Insignia already, you might not want to do this here just because Insignia will not be accessible unless you have the Insignia team remove your system from their database and then you go through the registration process a second time on your system with a new hard drive key. However, with that being understood here, we can go to Applications, and you want to open up NK Patcher Settings. Once NK Patcher loads, you can go down to the EEPROM section, go down to Advanced Features, go to Hard Drive, and you can go to the Change EEPROM Hard Drive Key. It will let you know that this is going to unlock your hard drive, set the key to ones, and then relock it. 
So as long as you understand the risks here and the pros and cons, you can continue if you so wish to. And again, like we talked about with Insignia, you will not be able to access Insignia unless you have your console removed, or in this case, if you restore the original hard drive key. And as long as you understand, you can continue on. You can take note of this master password if you want to, because this will change, but we can tap OK and let it continue. It should now go through the process of unlocking your hard drive, and you can see everything's happening here. So you shouldn't have to touch your controller, it's going to do everything for you, and once everything has been updated, it should exit out of this. It'll finally do another EEPROM backup, which we will make sure we will get backed up. And here we go, with the key now changed, we can now exit out of NK Patcher by doing the exit combination shown on screen. Now you should be back over at your console's dashboard once that's been completed, and again, you need your console hooked up to your network because we are going to back up that new EEPROM. Yes, only the hard drive key changed, but it would be best practice to have all the other information for our specific console on hand. Make sure this is up and running and connected to your network before we move back over to the PC. For this, of course, we'll use our favorite FTP software again. Mine is WinSCP, but you can use whatever you want to here. You can create a new remote tab and do the exact same thing as before. And once you log in here, again, go to the E drive, go into backups, go to EEPROM, and everything is going to be right here, including our original EEPROM. So we can just back up this EEPROM somewhere safe. Now I've said this a few times in videos, but what I personally like to do as I personally have multiple systems is I go into the EEPROM folder and once here, open up the Xbox info.txt, look for the Xbox serial number. You can double click this because this is going to be unique. I like to copy this out and then I like to typically rename the folder. So I put the serial number in there and call it something like serial number EEPROM backup and then keep that somewhere safe. Again, it should only be at this point less than two kilobytes. So you want to back this up onto your computer, onto cloud storage, whatever might be available. And like I said, again, if we even check Xbox info, it's not just the hard drive key that is there. It's going to be other sensitive information that will be here as well too, to make up our Xbox. So this is why it is still important to back up the EEPROM even if you have your hard drive key set to all ones. Now for a couple of additional steps here, if you have any type of downloadable content or updates that were installed to your Xbox, unfortunately they are not going to work until they have been re-signed. So there is thankfully a nice easy tool for this here from Feudal Nate called the Content Recovery Tool. This will be linked down below in the description here and thankfully it's easy enough to use. You just need to go to Releases, and we're going to download the latest release of the content recovery tool. Just save this zip somewhere you can easily find it. Once the zip is downloaded, right click and you can extract it right here. Then we're going to take this application and transfer it over. So go ahead, fire up your FTP client and inside of here on the Xbox, once you are connected, we can go to the E drive, applications and transfer over the content recovery tool. It should transfer over pretty much instantly since it's small enough. With that done, we can now disconnect from the Xbox and go back over to the console. By going over to our file explorer, go into the E drive, applications, and we're going to run the content recovery tool. So just highlight the XPE and tap the A button. You should see here that there's really two options. One, you can search for content packages, or two, you can go to the dashboard. If you have any DLC or updates, tap the A button. It's going to do a search. And if you have anything that needs to be fixed, it will do so automatically. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately here, I didn't have any content that needed fixing here. So once the fix is done, you just need to tap the B button to exit to the dashboard. And once you're back here, you should be all well and good. So any DLC or any title updates that you had installed should now be resigned with that new hard drive key. As for fixing up any saves, you will need to go back over to your PC to take a look at a few of the tools that are available. There is a wonderful list over on console mods with these EEPROM locked saves, and there's a a few tools which are available. One of them here being xsavesig005, which you can just download this and save it somewhere you can easily find it. However, do keep in mind that there are some games here that do require additional configurations or even different applications. The main one here being Forza Motorsport, which does require Forza Sign. Also, something else that's really cool is Feudal Nate ended up having a collection of standalone resigners and additions here which you can check out over on his GitHub page. So if you click this here, 
There's a ton of different ones, and if you're seeing this and panicking, don't worry. These are many different re-signers for other games. These are not only games that are EEPROM locked. So essentially here, if there was a game like, for example, Project Gotham Racing 2, you can click on this. And from here, this would be the text that you would need, and you can copy this out and save it to the resign.any file for the X save sig application. We'll take a look at those two applications real quick, just to set them up. If you grab any saves from your console, you will have to, of course, FTP in, go to the E drive, go to the UData folder, and the saves are going to be inside of here for your specific games that you're looking to resign. So if there's any saves that you need to download, you can just go in here with the appropriate title ID, and then you'll be able to download this to your computer, run the resigner, and then upload it back over to the console. For X save sign, you can go ahead, right click this and extract it into its own folder. And once you're inside of here, there is going to be the xbhdkey.any file that you must update. So you can double click this, and as you can see here, you can change the description, but your hard drive key by default is set to all zeros. However, you are going to have to change this to all ones. So you can either count it out by counting out 32 ones, or since we have our EEPROM backup here, you can go into xboxinfo.txt, double click the hard drive key, right click, copy this out. And then you can go into the XBHDD key any and paste it right there. Again, it should be 32 characters, but this is going to be 32 ones. Then you can save this and close it out. Anything related to re-signing is going to be within the re-sign any, which there's going to be a few games that are available here already. But like I said, if you want to add one in here, in this example, it would be Project Gotham Racing 2. You can go over to this repository. You can copy this out. And once it's copied out, I'm just going to make it clean and make sure we put it where it needs to be. So I'm going to put it in right here. You can save this. And for this here, just to read it, this is going to be the title ID of the game. And this is going to be the data file that it is looking for. So for example, here, if you're looking for your Project Gotham Racing 2 save, you would look for the title ID inside of UData of 4D53004B. And I know this is not the exact folder, but whichever folder you go into, there's going to be some files like this, but the one you're looking for is profile.sav. So you would just need to download this, put it into your temp directory right here, and then once it's been resigned, you can re-upload it back to your console. For X save sig, you would just open up the executable itself. Make sure you read through the agreement here and make sure you go through the process to agree to it. And from here, you pick your sign. So for example, Project Gotham Racing 2, it's looking for that profile.sav. Then you just make sure you have that profile set right there, refresh, and then apply anything there, hit OK. And then at that point, you can transfer that file back over. And if you're using Forza Sign, you can go ahead, right click, and extract this into its own folder. And inside of here, there's going to be a readme that will explain how to use this, a DLL, but the executable is really what we need. For this, you'd need to download the entire folder for your Forza Motorsport save, point to it directly. And then for your destination key, you just paste it in right here and click on resign. Then once it's done, exit out and transfer that back to your console. And with all of that done, that was a much lengthier video than I anticipated here, but I did want to cover this for you all in regards to this, the pros and cons and what to look out for. Once you have your hard drive key that has been set, you've re-signed any type of downloadable content, title updates, or even any saves that are on here. At this point, you can go through the process of, if you have not done so already, registering your console onto Insignia if you so choose to do so. So that way in the future, you can play on Insignia Live and that way you can have fun using a new Xbox Live replacement service. I'm not going to cover that in this video here because I have an entire video dedicated to connecting to Insignia for soft modded and hard modded consoles. And I do recommend giving that a watch if you're interested in that. Anyways, that is about it for this video here. If you enjoyed it and it helped out, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. But as I always say, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.